Heron the Black of House Hor, also known as Black Heron, was one of the most feared kings in Westerosi history who became notorious for his cruelty and savagery. Heron ruled the Riverlands north of the Blackwater and was also king of the Isles and Rivers. His most notable achievement was dedicating himself to the construction of a giant castle that would take close to 40 years to fully complete. The castle would be known to history as Harrenhal and was located on the northern shore of the God's Eye in the heart of Westeros. After Aegon's coronation within the Aegon Fort, he sent his sister Rhaenys south with her dragon Meraxes towards Storm's End and Visenya north with her dragon Vagar towards the Vale to conquer them both, while he would travel northwest directly to the God's Eye and Harrenhal. On the south bank of the God's Eye, Aegon's forces were flanked and attacked from behind by two of Heron's sons that had crossed the lake under nightfall and snuck around undetected. The battle was known as the Wailing Willows, and Aegon's troops suffered many losses, but he would not let this go unpunished. Aegon found Heron's sons crossing back across the God's Eye towards Harrenhal, and he descended on them with Beleriand to burn them all. Heron's two sons and the rest of their forces all died. During the construction of Harrenhal, Heron besieged the Riverlands for materials and robbed many lords and small folk of all their gold. Heron was also responsible for the death of many of the construction workers on the castle by overworking them so much. Because of all these things, Heron gained many enemies and the lords of the Riverlands rose against him to join Aegon when he came. The most notable of these lords being Edmund Tully of Riverrun, the first family to declare for House Targaryen in the Riverlands after Aegon's coronation. Aegon's new forces that joined him along with the Tullys greatly outnumbered Heron's, so he retreated into Harrenhal with his remaining sons and supporters where he felt safe. Harrenhal was the largest castle ever built in Westeros and had a reputation of being impregnable. Before launching an attack, Aegon sent a maester to the gates of Harrenhal to attempt a parley. Heron came forth from the castle, and their words were exchanged. Yield now, and you may remain as the lord of the Iron Islands. Yield now, and your sons will live to rule after you. I have 8,000 men outside your walls. What is outside my walls is of no concern to me. Those walls are strong and thick, Heron said. But not so high as to keep out dragons. Dragons fly. I built in stone. Stone does not burn. Aegon's final words to Heron the Black were, When the sun sets, your line shall end. Heron spat on the ground after these words and returned back to the castle where he ordered men armed with bows, spears, and crossbows to man the walls in anticipation of a dragon attack. As the sun set and the last light faded, Aegon flew up with Beleriand and descended into the castle walls. Beleriand roared with fury and blew black fire with faint swirls of red. All the wood, straw, wool, hemp, and food caught fire immediately along with all the men inside. Screaming and running in all directions, some of the men threw themselves over the castle walls to plunge to their deaths. Aegon's allies outside of the walls said the towers of the castle glowed red like candles in the dark sky and slowly began to melt and twist. Heron the Black and the rest of his sons all died that night, along with their family name. For generations later, people would say the spirits of Heron and his sons haunted the castle. The day after the attack, Aegon accepted an oath of allegiance from the Lords of the Riverlands and named Edmund Tully as Lord Paramount of the Trident. When the ruins of Harrenhal cooled from Beleriand's flames, Aegon sent in men to collect the swords of his fallen enemies and send them back to the Aegon Fort in wagons. The swords he collected that day would be used to forge part of the Iron Throne that all future kings of Westeros would rule from. Thank you for watching.